If everyone get, gets a seat, we'll get started. I'm going to do a few of the announcements. I have several things to, to go through. Uh, I want to welcome everybody, our visitors. It's so good to have you with us, and we look forward to uh, spending some time after services with you. Scripture reading tonight is from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 through 37. There are cards on the uh, back of the pews in front of you. Uh, for both members and visitors, please fill them out, pass them to the outside aisles, and we'll pick them up in just a little bit. For our um, prayer list, we want to uh, particularly think of um, Brad Bickle. Uh, it's a friend of Joe Leibner's, and he's having surgery this Thursday for thyroid cancer. Uh, then Elijah, the man with the crutches, uh, he fractured his ankle, and uh, so we hope that that heals well. Uh, we'll remember uh, those that are shut in that, that can't worship with us at this time, Sue Lauderdale, Ruth Ann Gardner, Vicki Lukes, uh, Joan Lowry, um, Liz Shake, Jim Sims, and Earl Whitmore. And um, events, big one today is uh, after this service, we're going to have our trunk or treat for all of our young people, plus then uh, food to eat, so all of our visitors, if you weren't coming for trunk or treat, please stay. There's lots of food back there. Look forward to that. Uh, this uh, Saturday is the um, youth devotional here. So we're looking forward to that also. We're having a lot of our young people here at 530. And there is a uh, mission form in uh, Forestdale on Saturday from uh, 10 o'clock until about maybe 1.30 or so with lunch provided. They're going to be talking about some foreign missionary opportunities, uh, Tanzania, uh, India, I know there's one more someplace. But there's, uh, if you want to um, look at that, uh, please do so. Um, don't forget daily savings time next weekend. It comes off. We return to uh, going to work in the dark, coming home in the dark for those who have to work. And then I have a, a uh, expanded announcement that uh, Jan wanted me to, to share. Uh, she wanted to make sure that so many women did so many things and worked so hard on the Ladies Day. She wanted to give as many of them as credit as, as, as she could. Um, she says, thanks to the group of ladies who spent their time filling the uh, 100 soup in a jar uh, giveaways. Uh, for Deanna cutting the material and the, for the tops and the ribbons. Uh, thank you to Kara for the wonderful meal she planned, including having uh, Jamie Barnes uh, doing the meat for that. I know that he was thrilled with all the pulled pork he had to prepare. Uh, to Wendy for the uh, beautiful decorations. A special thank you to those who, put, who participated in the program, uh, for Sue Miller for leading us in song, uh, Betty Sue and uh, Sharon for prayers, and uh, Debbie and Wendy for a reading of scriptures. It takes a lot of people to put together a good event like that, and, and certainly we saw good teamwork and good effort, and people using their gifts uh, that God has provided them. We're going to start our scripture reading. Quentin? Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep, and when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing that he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine, and Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. First song this evening is number 860. 
Time. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this time, this day that we could gather here to sing praises to thy name, to worship thee, to give you the honor and glory that you deserve. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for all the blessings of this life, that greatest blessing of thy Son and his sacrifice made on our behalf. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for his word that he left with us, that we could learn those things that we need in this life to be a, a better Christian and a follower of Jesus. Heavenly Father, help us to study the, your word that we will 
apply it to our lives that we can serve you and be better servants in your vineyard and bring more to you. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the blessings that you have, have uh, granted at the time of those that are under doctor's care and the health that has been regained. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with those that are still on our sick list and our shutdowns. Be with them that administer those that are, have upcoming uh, surgeries. That you be, be with those that perform their surgeries, that uh, they may be successful, and, and those that are going through this will have a better quality of life. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who have lost loved ones, that you will comfort them as only you can at this time. Heavenly Father, we know that there are things we say and do in our everyday walk of this life that is not according to thy will. Be with us, Heavenly Father, and we realize these things. We will turn away from these things and ask forgiveness and get on that straight and narrow path that leads to you. Heavenly Father, we ask that you go with us now as we go through this service, that everything we say and do will be in accordance with thy will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The invitation song is 714 after the lesson. The song before the lesson is number 843. Shall we stand as we sing this song and then be seated after the song?
Thank you, Frank. We do appreciate the presence of uh, each one and some visiting with us who hasn't been here for a while. We're glad that uh, they're here. And uh, some old friends, they're still young. Uh, they are here. And we're glad that uh, everyone is here this evening. If you will, turn to First Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17. In all of our uh, Bible classes, we are doing a survey of the Old Testament. This week in our studies, today and Wednesday night, we're looking at that period of time known as the United Kingdom. And as we began the study of the Old Testament, looking at the different periods of Bible history, and especially in the adult class, and I know the younger classes are looking at these matters as well, and trying to look at the different people, the various places, the different events that occurred, so that there are some lessons that we can learn that will be beneficial to us. This week, basically our study is dealing with uh, Saul David and Solomon, and how you can take those three and deal with them in, in two class sessions. You know, we just have to touch this and touch that and proceed on. But there are some things that we are wanting to cover and in all of our classes uh, this week. Do you have any giants in your life that you wish you could get rid of? Do, do, do you have anything that, that's really a, a, a troublesome to you that you wish you could just wipe out? In First Samuel chapter 17, beginning of chapter you see here is the children of Israel on one side of the mountain and, and here's the Philistines on the other side and, and the Philistines basically we talk about Goliath is calling upon the children of Israel to send out someone to fight with him. Now, this man, Goliath, we know a giant, over nine feet tall, pretty good size, has all this armor on, and he's calling for someone from the children of Israel to step up, and let's get it on. Send anyone out here that you want. In the valley here, and we'll do battle. And if I win, if I defeat your representative, then that means that you will serve us. But if I'm defeated, then we will serve you. Morning and evening, Goliath brought forth that challenge to the people of God. For 40 days, this went on. Everyone doesn't have to be involved in this, just two representatives. David is sent by his father to take some food to his brothers. They are with the army 
of Saul, if you will. And when he arrives, he's trying to figure out what's going on here. David, of course, a young man. Then he hears the challenge that Goliath offers. And when David hears that, David, I guess you could say, is somewhat disturbed. over what he is hearing. Because here's a man who is defiling the armies of God. And David is disturbed over what he is hearing. And he, he can't understand why there's not, you know, there's Saul. Saul is a, is a guy of pretty good stature. In fact, bigger than the rest of the people who is in his army. But he's not stepping forward. No one else is stepping forward. And David just does not understand this. What is going on? What is happening here? As David looks at this situation, yes, he sees there's a problem. That is, in the mindset of the children of Israel, there is a problem. That problem is... The giant Goliath. He is the enemy. And again, David still can't understand what's going on. But David not only sees the problem of the giant Goliath, he also sees another problem. And the problem is the people themselves. We talk about the Israelites, the children of Israel. The people themselves. Because basically, they are paralyzed. They are fear stricken. They are so afraid. They're not doing anything. And so basically, you could say, the, the real problem that exists here in the mind of David is not the giant. But the real problem in the mind of David is the people. And because of that fear, they don't want to step forward. David continues to inquire. And he comes to find out that there is a prize that the king has offered to anyone that will step up and to do battle with Goliath. And the prize includes... In fact, the scripture says, great riches. Not only great riches, but there's a girl involved. If you go and fight the giant Goliath, you get great riches, but you also get the girl. The king's daughter, one of them. And not only that, your family won't have to pay taxes from this moment on. So now you're going to live tax-free. You got great riches. 
and you got the girl. And David's still disturbed about that. Why hasn't somebody stepped forward? Here's this lad. And this situation is really getting his attention. And David can't stand it. So David steps forward and David expresses his desire. I will do it. Now, it's not the, the, the great riches, it's not the girl, it's not the tax-free stuff that's really motivating David. But David is troubled and he is upset over the fact that the armies of the Lord are being defiled by Goliath. The battle is the Lord's. As he states, as David begins to express his desire to, to, to do this, in fact, he says, I will, thy servant will go. Notice that David did not say, I ought to go, since nobody else is going to. David did not say, I should go because nobody else is going to step up. <coughs> David did not say, I, I need to, to do this because nobody else is going to do it. David said, I will. Thy servant will go. We're going to see as you look at this account, certainly he had desire, but we're going to see his determination I know I have deter up there. That's determination. I forgot how to spell determination. And we're going to see his determination. Because Dave is a man who had great courage. Dave is a man who had great confidence. Not in himself. Not in the things he's going to use to do battle with the giant Goliath. That was not what he's depending upon, but he's depending upon God. That's where his confidence was. That's where his dependence was, upon God. And that's why David could say, thy servant will go. Now, if you'll notice that Criticism comes to David. It's amazing to me when, when you read this account. Nobody wants to go into battle with the giant Goliath, and David said, I would go. And now people start criticizing him. Even before that, they, they're really criticizing David. They don't want to do it themselves. But David said, I will do it. They start criticizing. Sounds familiar? Sometimes that happens, doesn't it? People don't want to do certain work. But when somebody steps forward with courage and determination, with confidence in God to try to carry out some of the things the Lord wants us to do, then some began to criticize. 
Wow. In Philippians 4.13, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. We have one on our side that, that because he is on our side, we cannot fail. We will not fail as long as we do what God wants us to do. The Lord is with us. Victory is ours. That's the kind of confidence and dependence and trust that David had in God. Notice, the criticism came from his own family. Here David was asking all these questions about what's going on here and why isn't someone stepping up to the plate, if you will. And his brother basically says to him, Why are you here? Why are you here? What is your motive anyway? Why are you here? Sometimes people don't want to see what's being done is that which is good and right, and so they begin to question the motive. But David made this statement after being questioned by his brother in verse 28. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? When I came here and I saw these things going on, I saw this going on, Something needs to be done. And you ask me why I am here? Is there not a cause? Can you not see that? Does not that get your attention? There is a cause. There is a cause. And then when it was expressed to Saul that David said, I will go. Basically, Saul's response to David was, who do you think you are? Have you heard that? When you want to do something that's good and right, somebody asks, well, who do you think you are? And Saul said to David, David, okay. You can't go. You can't do this. You are but a youth. And Goliath has been a warrior since his youth. And so who do you think you are? You're not mature enough to do this. You can't do this. Sometimes we fail to use our youth. I don't believe that's true of us here. Because we want to use our youth whenever we can. And we have youth that do step up and participate. Use their abilities and use their talents, which is good. But I've been in places where people try to, you know, try to stifle that. They, they try to hinder that from happening. You know, church is not for young people to be doing things. The older people need to be doing all this. Well, that's not true. Let no man despise 
by you, and sometimes we do. When we try to discourage our young people from being involved, certainly in the work of the church. And here Saul is trying to discourage David, and he's using this on David. Who do you think you are? I remember years ago, I can remember some things years ago. The very first congregation I was preaching for up in Kentucky. It was a mission congregation. They had been in existence about five or six years before we moved there. There were no elders there at the time. And so after a few years, we began to process to think about trying to see if there are any men in the congregation who are qualified and who desire to serve as elders. And there were three or four of us men that were on this committee to go and talk to different individuals and so forth about their serving as an elder. There's one man that had been attending there for two or three years, and, and he had served previously as an elder in California. I don't mean to make any disparaging remark about California. Or maybe I do. But anyway, he, he was an elder and had been an elder in a church in California. But he seemed to be a, a guy who was pretty well knowledgeable and, and sound. And, and I was a young man about 25 or 26 years old. And, and he was, I thought, real old back then. He's probably in his 60s. And, and but his name had been turned in about possibility of him serving as an elder. So we went to talk to him. And we, one of the questions that I asked him was, okay, now if you became an elder of the congregation here, what would you like to see to be done in this congregation? And he said, well, the congregation that we were at in California, here's what we did. On Sunday night, at least once a month, and sometimes more than that, but at least once a month, we invited a denominational preacher to come in and to speak Sunday night. Why did you do that? Well, we were hoping that where he preached would invite our preacher to go and preach at their place on some Sunday night. I asked him, do you see any problem with that? His response was, do you see anything wrong with debating? My question was, I I'm giving you what happened in our conversation. My question was, was there any discussion after he spoke? The interview elder said anything. Say anything? No. And so I failed to see the debating aspect of this. Help me out. Where's the debating aspect of this? No, but we told him to preach anything he wants to preach, and we're not going to say anything. And so here you are, shepherds of the flock, and you are permitting a wolf to come in. That's what you're doing. Well, that didn't set well. And his response to me was, Jerry, you're still a young man. There's a lot of things you don't know. Two things correct. You just wait till you get older. And you're going to see things differently.
What was he saying to me? He was saying to me, who do you think you are? Another place we had invited, I didn't, the elders are invited this man to come in and preach. I learned that he was preaching for a congregation that was not supporting things that were good and right. And I sent a questionnaire to that man with the permission of our eldership. He called up one of the elders. They had close friends, went to school together. And his statement was, his question was to his friend, elder, who does Jerry think he is? I have been preaching for over 50 years and nobody has ever questioned me about anything. We need to understand something. When it comes to proclaiming the truth, which we are to do, 2 Timothy 2 and verse 4. First Peter 4 and verse 11, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. We are to uphold sound doctrine. We are to defend the truth. Jude verse 3, we all understand that. When it comes to those things, it matters not the age of the individual. Truth is not established by age. But truth has been defined and described to us in the Word of God. And so the question sometimes that is thrown out to young people is, who do you think you are? I'm trying to serve the Lord. And the Bible says, here's what I need to be doing. And so the question to, to David was, by David, by Saul, who do you think you are? You are but a youth. When words of criticism comes, can that be a discouragement to some to stop striving or trying to be and trying to do what God wants to be done? Yes, it can be. Not just for young people. We had a Man, he's probably was in his 30s or 40s at the time. One Wednesday night, this was just before I moved there, and the last preacher was still there. And they asked this man to lead singing. One Wednesday night, he did. And the preacher got up after he led singing. And he said, well... We appreciate Brother Billy, that was his name, leading our singing this evening. And we all know he's not a very good song leader, but we appreciate him leading our singing. Well, guess what? That man never stepped in the pulpit again to lead singing. It didn't happen. He was not going to do it. Words of criticism can discourage. But when we focus not on the words of criticism, but when we focus on the Lord, when we focus on His will, it doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what anybody does. We're not going to lose focus. We're not going to stop being faithful to the Lord. David was not going to be hindered. Not going to be hindered. Even though the criticism came to him, it was not going to stop him from doing what needed to be done. David, as he talked to Saul, 
David reminded Saul of what has happened to him, what has happened to him. By his very hands, he has killed a lion, a bear. David's not afraid. The Lord is with me. God is on my side. And Saul was convinced. And Saul said, go. He said, go. But before you go, let's get you all fixed up. And he started starting to put all this armor on David. David said, this is not going to work. David recognized his limitation. We all do have limitations. We do. We really do. And David began to recognize his limitation. I cannot do this with all this armor. This is not going to work. I haven't proven these things. I haven't tried these things. It's not going to work. And besides that, I don't need them. I don't need them. I have a staff, have a sling, and I have some stones. And I have the strength of the Lord. David meets up with Goliath. And you know Goliath is, is just chomping at the bits. Finally sends somebody out. And you send this little kid out. Really? Is that the best you got to offer? And he began to speak words of disdain and contempt toward David. Again, basically, who do you think you are? You come out to fight against me? Picture, if you will, in your mind, here David is before that giant Goliath. Certainly the difference in size. But when it came to spiritual strength, there was also a big difference. And basically Saul said to David, I'm going to take care of you. I mean, you're, you're, going, you're, you're not going to be nothing after I get through with you, using modern terminology. Saul probably could take one hand, if you will, and take care of David. He probably thought he could take one finger and do it. And David said to Saul, here you come with a spear, verse 45, with a sword, and with a shield. You see, Goliath had someone in front of him carrying a shield. So he had all this armor on, and he comes with a spear and with a sword and having someone in front of him with a shield. David said, here's what you come at me with. But I come to thee in the name of of the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. And notice what David said to Goliath. This day, Will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. 
And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And that's why it is stated in verse 47, And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. How would you like to have seen that battle? How would you like to have seen that conversation? Hear that conversation. And the Bible says that David ran to Goliath. You didn't see David, you know, I, I speak some strong words, but oh, I better back up. I better back up. No, not David. You see who David was placing his trust and his confidence in. And that is the Lord. David carried it out, didn't he? He slew that giant Goliath. He beheaded that giant Goliath. It's good to have desire to do the will of God. It's good to have determination that I'm going to carry out God's will no matter what anybody says. Because I want to serve the Lord. That's the most important thing. And as we look at this account, and the lessons that we can learn. How that we ought to be motivated. Yes, we go forth into battle. We do have an enemy. There are those who are certainly against God and against His Word. We understand that. Words of criticism will come. We understand that. But. But. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. That's the kind of mindset we need. If we're going to be what God wants us to be, if we're going to do what God wants us to do, if we're going to progress, that God wants us in a way in which God wants us to progress from a spiritual standpoint. What a great example of facing the difficulties in life that we all face from time to time. Frank is about ready to lead us in this song. A song of encouragement. If you're not serving the Lord, we, we encourage you. We plead with you to think about your condition and think about where you need to be from a spiritual standpoint. I want to be on the Lord's side. Don't you? Who is on the Lord's side? That's a question that I've asked in time past. If you come this evening having faith, that faith, of course, has been developed by 
and through the word, Romans 10, 17, <laughs> repenting of your sins, turning from them, and confessing Christ and being baptized for the mission of your sins, then you can join in the battle. Be a part of the Lord's army. And understanding that as we continue to be faithful and loyal, victory is ours. It is ours. If you need to respond, we encourage you to come. If you never have obeyed the gospel, you need to come as a child of God. We encourage you to come. Make things right. So you can be that faithful and loyal servant of the Lord. Why not come? As together we stand. And as we sing. For those who aren't able to be here this morning to partake of the Lord's Supper, as we see number 644, please be seated on the first pew on either side, and you will be served the Lord's Supper. Tis
Wilson Sound Machines number 888. We're seeing all three stanzas and then remain standing for the closing prayer. Shall we stand as we sing the song? <coughs> thank you, Lord, for loving me. Let us pray. Oh, Father, we do thank you for this time that we've had this evening to come together as Christians to worship you in spirit and truth. And we pray, Father, that our songs of praise have been pleasing unto thee. And we pray, Father, that our worship has been carried out in a manner that's according to thy word. Oh, Father, we continue to thank you for your son. We thank you for his sacrifice. We thank you, Father, for his obedience to thy word. We pray, Father, that as Christians, that we will continue to be obedient to thy word. Oh, Father, we thank you for Brother Jerry and the message that he presented to us this evening. We pray, Father, we will take the principles of his lessons and uh, of his lesson and use them in our daily walk to become closer to thee. Oh, Father, we ask that you continue to be with those on our sick list. We ask that you help them get back to their much wanted health. And please be with those who have lost loved ones. We ask that you be with them at this time. Our Father, we ask that you go with us and watch over us until we meet again. Through Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>